I'm afraid this is not going to be a personal narrative, and uh, Simon's will be very hard to follow, but I do hope, I'm endeavoring to set all these exhibitions in, in their context. Um, so we... Um, Exhibiting and publishing the Sammlung Schloss Rohans had been a priority of Heinrich thyssen yet he could have hardly imagined that the collection that he'd begun and his son had first um, dutifully, partially reconstituted, um, but subsequently ever more imaginatively and passionately expanded. He could never have imagined that this would become the most widely exhibited collection in the world. And it was also the most ex extensively published private collection. This outcome would have surprised the younger Heine too. At first, he'd simply continued to fulfill his father's aim of bringing the collection and the companies together. In 1959 and 60, loan exhibitions were staged in museums in Rotterdam and Essen, close to their big business enterprises. I quote, primarily in order to give the members of our family's companies working there the opportunity to see these paintings. And here we should see um, um, the interior of the show at the, hanging at the Boymans Museum in Rotterdam. A request to borrow the collection came from museums across Europe and North America. All were denied, save for the invitation from the National Gallery of Art in London, which came through the collection's effective gatekeeper, old master dealer, Rudolf Heinemann. And he did have an office in London and a British wife. And here we see them outside the National Gallery. Um, but this request was a substantial ask. Evidently, it was also an honor um, Heine felt he couldn't refuse, not least because this state museum had never before staged an exhibition of a private collection. Indeed, part of the permanent collection had to be removed because the gallery had no dedicated rooms for temporary exhibitions. And the selection here focused on paintings formerly in British collections and German paintings, which are very poorly represented in London. But this unveiling of 118 masterpieces was a first, but it was also a last. Never again did the Baron risk lending his beloved Ghirlandaio portrait of Giovanna Tornaborni or the great Franz Hals family group. Then came a hiatus of 14 years. This was broken when part of the rapidly expanding modern art collection um, um, was exhibited for the first time in 1975 in the Kunsthalle of another company heartland, Bremen. It was described as, I quote, a special anniversary gift to the art lovers of Bremen on the occasion of the 100th anniversary of the Kunstverein, the art association. Its mastermind was the dealer who played a seminal role in creating this modern assemblage, um, um, Norman, Roman Norman Norbert Ketterer. While Heine could only have been well aware of the political significance of this collection, with its strong showing of German degenerate art and its benefit to the perception of his name and to that of his companies, there were other motivations. This event provided him with the first opportunity um, to see, I'm afraid I forgot to press, the, here we are, um, um, to see um, the lion's share of these modern works in a single venue, dispersed as they were across his private apartments in Lugano, properties in London and Monte Carlo, company offices and various stores. Um, moreover, it would provide him with another scholarly catalogue, um, funded, as the publication makes clear, by the um, shipping company, company Bremer Vulcan, of which Heine uh, held the majority share. Hannah Kiel's 1974 publication of the thyssen bornemitzer collection of modern paintings had comprised 66 largely German works of art. The Bremen show presented 84 and gave the period a far wider international context. It also included sculpture by Max Ernst, Alberto Giacometti, and Henry Moore. Um, uh, this show was very likely the catalyst for the collections launched onto the global rather than the international stage. The exhibition, The Origin of the 20th Century and the thyssen bornemitzer Collection, The World of Abstract and Surrealist Paintings, which toured um, to four venues in Japan in 1976, 
was in many ways a turning point in the course of the collection. It marked a departure from the alignment of the collection with the companies, and this was the first time an exhibition was generated neither internally nor by someone close to the collection. It was also the first conceived from the outset as a touring show. Moreover, this was the first exhibition to be accorded, in effect, diplomatic status, for it was held under the high patronage of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Japan and the Swiss Embassy in Tokyo. His Highness Prince Takamatsu, Emperor Hirohito's brother, was in attendance for the opening, while the princess cut the ribbon to open it, and the imperial couple presided over the official dinner given in honor of the Baron and the Baroness, and they could hardly have been more celebrated guests. Surviving correspondence never begins with the genesis of these loan exhibitions. They appear to have emerged out of conversations held over lunch, drinks, or dinner, or over the telephone. Um, and there are rarely hints as to the initiator. Yet this project can only have been the brainchild of the Swiss art historian Francois Dult, who wrote to the Baron in September 1975, I quote, I have just returned from Japan to write to you about our project. One of the biggest museums in Japan would be happy to organize an exhibition of your modern art collection. As we've already heard, the indefatigable Dolt is best described as an art empresario. He was an authority on Basile, on Sisley, Renoir. He was an exhibition organizer, publisher, journalist, dealer, and ultimately the founding director of the Fondation L'Hermitage in Lausanne. But most crucially, he linked Europe and Japan, facilitating a sequence of exhibitions that fueled the Japanese infatuation with Impressionist art in the 1970s. First approached to stage a Renoir show in Tokyo and Kyoto in, in 1969, which attracted more than a million visitors, he went on to curate over 40 more exhibitions in Japan, across Europe, and occasionally in the US. I was a friend of the people who owned the pictures, he said by way of explanation in an interview in 1993, claiming to have visited 900 collectors, profiling many in the Swiss magazine Loi. He, he first wrote about the Tissen Bonamitsa collection in 1950. For these projects in Japan, Dolt worked in association with the country's leading newspaper group, the Yomiyomi Shumbum. The patrons of of the arts in post-war Japan were family-run businesses, and it had become standard practice for art exhibitions to be initiated either by large media groups or by one of the department store art galleries that had since the early 20th century been established to entice customers to cross, the, cross their thresholds. These aspirational Western-style emporia offered not only merchandise, but also every kind of cultural event and spectacle and the demand for art exhibitions seemed insatiable. Newspaper and department store worked in tandem to stage and publicize these exhibitions, which would open in a commercial venue before moving to state museums. And the, the Nippon Television Network was conveniently a, a Yomiuri subsidiary, so um, we had all, all kinds of media uh, coverage here. Um, the, the Thyssen Bornemitzer exhibition was one of the first projects of the ambitious new Cebu Museum of Art, which opens its doors in the old Cebu department store in 1975. This, of course, is a modern photograph. And this was a key component of the strategy of its cultivated owner, Seiji Tsutsumi, to transform a floundering business in the working class district of the Cebu Railway Company's Ikibukuro railway terminus. This was the first department store gallery to have its own full-time curatorial staff, and it was closely monitored by Tsutsumi himself, a poet as well as a brilliant businessman, who raised the intellectual bar of the usual crowd-pleasing fare of traditional Japanese or impressionist exhibitions by embracing the avant-garde Heine would come to know Tsutsumi well after they were both invited by Alfred Taubman to join the new Sotheby's advisory board in 1983. After the inaugural show of Japanese contemporary artists, the Saibu Museum staged a Kandinsky, Kandinsky retrospective, 
and it had already shown Paul Clay in its former exhibition gallery in 1961. So it can be no coincidence that this Thiessen exhibition should have focused on abstract and surrealist painting, opening with works by Kandinsky, um, um, around the line, and Clay here too. Um, and also to have the, the Miro on its cover, as we have seen. Um, the show traveled on to state museums in Kobe, Fukuoka, and Ishikawa, whose audiences were similarly invited, I quote, to admire for the first time in Japan vari various aspects of surrealist and abstract painting. This tour drew an average of 1,500 visitors a day. Unfortunately, Dolt didn't send Heine any photographs or press cuttings from this show, but, but I do offer you a cutting um, he did send of a, of a subsequent Degas exhibition um, he curated, which included Heine's Dancer in Green. As Dolt explained in 1993, what facilitated matters at the time, although it has changed now, is that the organizers were happy to invite 30 people over for a week. Even the illustrious, I arranged for many illustrious European collectors to go to Japan, even the illustrious Tissen, whose collection I presented three times, hugely appreciated being a guest of the Yomiuri Shumbum. Japan was the beginning of a new chapter of high-profile sponsored touring exhibitions that would become social events as much as shows, and for whose openings we've just heard, Heine would be joined by a retinue of friends and family, in this case including his 26-year-old son, Georg Heinrich Heine Jr., who had recently joined the Thyssen Bornemitzer group. Thereafter, the Baron would usually invite one of his children to each of the jamborees that launched these traveling shows, where the protocol of formal receptions was counterbalanced by the opportunity to explore locations otherwise difficult to access. His foot now firmly in the door, Dolt set about arranging another tour of the modern art collection. This opened in the Musée d'Ixelles in Brussels in October 77, before moving on to the Musée d'Art Modern de la Ville de Paris and the Villa Malpensata in Lugano in 1978. Here, where less than half of the 81 exhibits had also been shown in Japan, Dolt described the most important section of the exhibition as devoted to the work of the Cubists, many of which were very recent acquisitions. So, um, Juan Gris, Bottle and Fruit Dish, Brock, Woman with a Mandolin, and Gino Severini's, oh gosh, <laughs> um, we do, I think we can not have that just yet. Um, um, Natura Morta al Masala, was, which was only shown in um, the Villa Mel Pensata, had joined the collection in 1976. Um, Picasso's Head of a Man arrived the following year. Um, the show's already only barely kept pace with the ever-expanding inventory. Set in motion, the lone juggernaut was unstoppable. Plans were also underway for further tours of the collection on two other continents. That for Australia came by invitation of a head of state. The year 1979 marked the 150th anniversary of the state of Western Australia and the opening of the newly constructed Art Gallery of Western Australia in Perth in October was part of, of the celebrations. It was a gallery in need of an opening splash. America and Europe, a century of modern masters from the thyssen Bornemitzer collection, and the Baron himself provided just that. Revealingly, Heine's one stipulation was that a fully illustrated international standard catalogue be prepared. Nothing had as yet been published on the American collection. This group already um, included some of um, this, group, this collection's best-known works, including Heed's Orchid and, Summing, uh, Orchid and Hummingbird and the Stuart David Pochard. According to the Sydney Morning Herald, the man responsible for persuading the Baron to bring his collection to Australia was one Mark Saunders, a publisher who commuted between Perth and New York, while the catalogue also cited the New York media mogul and collector Cy Newhouse, um, and the latter's long-standing friend, Roy Cohn. Cohn, a prominent lawyer and consummate fixer, happened to represent Heine's main dealer 
of modern and contemporary American art in New York, Andrew Crispo. There was nothing Andrew Crispo would not do to ingratiate himself with his best client, and his team at the gallery effectively curated the sh this show. Heine had, of course, the final say on loans, withdrawing um, his Salvador Dali um, in order to send it to the Dali retrospective at the Pompidou in Paris, although um, it had been used um, rather unfortunately for the billboards publicizing the exhibition. As Heine explained in a then rare press conference and exhibition walkthrough, the show had been conceived some 18 months before as a display of just 25 paintings before evolving into a much more ambitious exploration of the historic exchange of ideas and influences between Europe and America. Heine's old world charm had the press eating out of his hands as he explained how much he would miss uh, Renoir's uh, Woman with a Parasol, which usually hung in his bedroom at the Villa Favorita. Um, more revealing was his comment, I quote, many people are happy to sell to me because they know I will not be putting the paintings away in a bank vault. At this point, it's worth stating the obvious, that such exhibitions reflected the growing public appetite for visiting museums and galleries, as well as the competition between them to attract visitors and thereby funds. Um, major loans were only possible through the munificent patronage of corporate sponsors, increasingly keen to associate themselves with high-profile cultural events, or through insurance arranged under government indemnity schemes, which had only recently been introduced in most host countries. This show, coordinated by the Australian Gallery Directors' Council, was indeed insured under government indemnity, and it was also sponsored by local me media. It sent the 180 works onto the state galleries at Adelaide, Brisbane, and Sydney, as well as to the National Gallery in Melbourne. As soon as the dates were set, the invitations flooded in from the great and good across Australia, supplementing the official sightseeing and business arrangements um, uh, already um, set for and by Heine and his party, which included his daughter Francesca and Heine Jr., plus Andrew Crispo and his gallery manager. Festivities began with a private charter to Alice Springs, flying over the Olgas and landing to climb Ayers Rock at sunset. Um, which was obviously a pretty amazing thing to do. Um, among those Heine thanked after the trip were Roy Cohn for your most amusing dinner. Evidently a good time was had by all for a letter to the director's council from the Baron's disgruntled caretaker, Shandor Burkesh, alluded to there being no funds to reimburse his flight because the exhibition's budget had already been exceeded, I quote, especially by Mr. Crispo and his party. The cultural impact of this tour on a far-flung part of the world that did not receive many loan exhibitions should not be underestimated. The Queensland Art Gallery in Brisbane uh, drew the largest crowds, a record 64,475 visitors, with closing times extended and queues around the block, so literally a blockbuster, to put this figure in context, this six-week leg of the tour attracted around 14 times as many visitors as the Villa Favorita saw in a year. As one journalist wrote, the imminent display of more than 100 paintings from the famous thyssen bornemisza collection has created interest on a scale more commonly observed around the arrival of a pop star or a sporting body. It was not without um, serious drama, however, such as when the Royal Australian Air Force Base at Amberley rushed over a generator after the power in the gallery failed and the temperature began to rise, forcing the closure of the exhibition. Um, Robert Rauschen's, Rauschenberg's three-meter-wide express um, proved too big to fit into the lift um, up to the gallery um, so that it was exhibited instead at the City Hall where someone could not resist photographing it with the um, painter of the city hall, um, Wayne Burton. Um, only too aware of their liabilities, the Australians had made one conservator responsible for the care of the collection throughout the tour. 
Gordon Hudson had begun by making his initial assessments before the paintings left Switzerland and the UK, but found the biggest problem of all was the deterioration of the styrene foam packing caused by the impact of aircraft landing, which of course it did a great deal throughout this trip. At the 11th hour, Heine had agreed to the request of the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Brian Muldoon, to allow the show to travel across the Tasman Sea. To enable this, his government identified an art exhibition for the first time. The show duly opened at the National Gallery of Art in Wellington in September 1980 and traveled on to Auckland and Christchurch. The hastily altered catalog described it as, I quote, the most important collection of modern art ever presented for viewing in New Zealand, as well as a landmark in the cultural life of the country. In his preface to both catalogues, Heine expressed the sentiment, perhaps for the first time, that he believed the collection that he had inherited from his father, I quote, should not only receive custodial care, but that it should live and grow, be made available to all people. Perhaps Simon de Puri played some role in formulating this construction. He'd been employed starting in September um, 1979 to represent as well as manage a rapidly expanding collection, not only widely dispersed, but now called upon to travel in several directions at any one time. One of his first tasks, as we've just heard, was to courier paintings to New Zealand. I was received like a rock star, going from television to radio interview, he recalled. The cultural impact was massive, particularly in New Zealand, because this was the first time that a Picasso had arrived on New Zealand soil. And in fact, these, as we know, were, were three Picassos, um, Head, which had belonged to Gertrude Stein, um, the Harvesters, and the later Head of a Man. Um, the Australian tour, as we've also heard, set another precedent when Heine presented a work of art from the collection to the host museum. Um, at the official opening of the Art Gallery of Western Australia by the Prime Minister, Sir Charles Court, Heine announced to widespread astonishment that he would like to donate Kirchner's woman in a hat. Um, I believe that the Kirchner is a painting that belongs rather in a museum than in a private house, the Baron said, but I will not miss it less for that. This gift, valued at $250,000, was followed up by an offer to lend his Brancusi bronze, Sleeping Muse, to the Art Gallery of New South Wales, which was hoping to enhance its small sculpture collection. One unexpected effect of this Antipodean tour was that it inspired, or perhaps incensed, Andrew Crispo's great rival, Lawrence Fleischmann of the Kennedy Galleries, to organize his own bravura unveiling of their client's collection. On behalf of the American Friends of Art and Religion, a show of American masters opened at the Vatican Museum in Rome in 1983. Again, it is believed to be the first instance of this august institution playing host to a private collection. But here I digress a little. It was not only the logistical pressures of the Australi Australasian tour that had prompted Simon de Puri's appointment. In 1976, Marco Grassi, the collection's Italian-American conservator, had written Heine a long memorandum setting out details for a proposed US tour to, I quote, acquaint a wider American public of the breadth, quality, and importance of the thyssen bornemisza collection. His plan for an exhibition focusing on the last 20 years, um, that is Heine's contribution to the historic collection. It would not only present old masters and modern and contemporary art, but also sculpture, ranging from medieval ivories to the Giacometti dog, plus Renaissance jewels, gold boxes, furniture, silver, and a single carpet. He suggested a three-venue winter tour, East Coast, West Coast, and the Midwest, which would enable the loans to be back in Lugano in time for the gallery opening in May. He also proposed involving the International Exhibitions Foundation in Washington. This was an organization responsible for mounting major traveling shows, um, which had access to funding from the National Endowment for the Arts, including the indemnity program created by 
Congress in 1975, i.e. just a, a few years before, for the purpose of minimizing the costs of ensuring international exhibitions. Um, incidentally, this um, was only extended to include art belonging to US entities in 2007. Grassi be believed that the organization's prestige and fundraising capability would be of invaluable assistance. Heine had only recently declined the request of the Yomiomi Shumbum to show highlights of the Old Master Collection in Japan on the grounds that he did not lend paintings over 200 years old because the transportation did them no good. The Old Masters were also the most valuable and widely admired part of the collection. He took some persuading. The International Exhibitions Foundation was duly approached, and its founding director, um, the obviously ancient Anne-Marie Anne Pope, visited the Favorita in the summer of um, 1977. Uh, Mrs. Pope was a force to be reckoned with. Born in Dortmund in 1910, she'd studied in Munich, Heidelberg, and Radcliffe College in the US before running the Smithsonian's Institution's traveling exhibition service. She married John Pope, director of the Freer Gallery of Art in Washington, and then set up her own nonprofit exhibition touring service in 1965. A measure of her tenacity and iron will was, that, was her spending 20 years persuading the Albertina in Vienna to allow Dura's celebrated drawing of praying hands to leave the country. She had occasionally arranged loan exhibition from overseas private collections too, with the first of several um, drawn from the collections of the Dukes of Devonshire at Chatsworth, staged in 1969. Given her Washington connections, the National Gallery of Art was always given first refusal, but the real value of her service was that it brought exhibitions to smaller and less well-funded museums, providing them with the requisite ancillary services from sponsorship, catalogues, brochures, interpretation materials, posters, press releases, images. As the NGA's director, Jay Carter Brown, explained it, um, I quote, the difficulty in this game is that it takes about three quarters of an hour to see an exhibition and three years to put it together. By the time the Tissen exhibition, exhibition made its debut at the um, National Gallery, um, in Washington in November um, 79, the show that Marco Grassi had conceived and Heine modified had undergone various dramatic metamorphoses. Now it was scheduled for a nine-city, two-year tour and comprised exclusively old master paintings. Moreover, around half of them came from the historic core collection. Surviving correspondence does does not reveal how this came about, but by the end of 1977, it had become already um, uh, a show of old master paintings um, alone. Um, this decision to admit the applied arts had the um, unexpected consequence of establishing Heine in the public consciousness as solely a picture collector, and I don't think that really ever changed until some of the much later exhibitions, and even then, hardly so. Lord Clark, the towering personality of the British art establishment, made famous by the international success of his TV series, Civilization, had agreed to make the selection for the exhibition from Heine's long list and write a catalogue introduction. He already knew the pictures, having visited the Villa Favorita six years earlier. When he wrote to thank his absent host in 1971, he enthused the collection is really fabulous. I knew it was good, but had no idea how good. Most Americans had no idea how good it was either, which is probably why Heine was inveigled to lend some, but not all, of his father's masterpieces too. In the event, Clark was hospitalized and suggested that Carter Brown's predecessor, the similarly patrician John Walker III, take on the task. As Marco Grassi had suggested, Professor Alan Rosenbaum, creator of Fine Arts Museum at Princeton, prepared the catalog entries. His thank you letter to Heine after his visit to the Villa Favorita referred to last minute loan changes and also his reservations about one painting being entirely autographed, the, the Bellini. 
um, the Dimitris. Um, he wrote, I was very pleased in Lugano to realize that, unlike some collectors, you do not object to such open discussion. And it's to Heine's eternal credit that the scholars commissioned to write his series of, catalog, of collection catalogues, as well as the exhibition catalogues, were always given free reign. It's tempting to say that the first US tour of 57 old master paintings transformed not only the Tissenborn Mitzer collection, but the Baron himself into something of a household name, at least those households of the gallery going public. This exhibition opened in Washington um, and traveled on to um, Detroit, Minneapolis, Cleveland, and um, Los Angeles, Denver, Fort Worth, Kansas City, and finally New York, where Sir John Pope Hennessy, head of the European Painting Department of the then directorless Metropolitan Museum of Art, told Heine it was, I quote, a spectacular success, attracting 180,916 visitors, and where a more than expected 3,413 copies of the catalog were sold, and over 15,000 brochures. As it traveled, the show gathered publicity not only on arts pages, but also in the society columns, for the accompanying receptions and dinners were invariably illustrious and spectacular. Testimony to the significance of these events um, are also the um, cartoons that appeared um, in, in the press. Um, um, and the, this Washington one is, is a particular favorite, um, and um, this is what was published in Detroit. Um, but the exhibition also generated significant international coverage in the specialist art press too. Um, before the um, opening, Heine had agreed for an entire edition of the scholarly Apollo uh, to be devoted to the collection and to Dalesford, um, which was the um, English country house that Heine had bought and recently refurbished, and where much of, of the collection was now hung or displayed. As for the exhibition itself, the Smithsonian Magazine gave nine pages to a press preview, um, and the Swiss art magazine Du allocated its cover um, and over 50 pages to this collection um, on the move. Um, it was really about the, um, the, both the touring shows in America and Australia. And its illustrations reveal um, what an undertaking this was. Um, asked why he agreed to these exhibitions, Heine admitted to a degree of pride, but explained that it was interesting for every collector to hear what other people thought about their works of art. Characteristically, um, he couldn't resist making the point that in the ca Swiss canton of Ticino, there'd been a lively debate in certain circles about whether or not his painting should be allowed to leave Switzerland. I am happy with the exhibitions in America and Australia. I can demonstrate to these people that my paintings can travel whenever I want, he said. Art knows no boundaries. The Japanese, Australasian, and America tours set a template for a decade and more of high-profile exhibitions. It seems that almost from the first, Anne-Marie Pope and the museum director she worked with realized that the depth and breadth of this collection and Heine's unparalleled generosity and flexibility as a lender could support multiple shows. As early as 1978, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art approached Mrs. Pope asking about the possibility of a show of German expressionists, while Carter Brown decreed that he would prefer a wider contemporary show. Um, what followed um, was 20th Century Masters, which opened in Washington and toured to five other, here we are, um, uh, five other American cities between 1982 and 1984. 19th Century American Landscape, um, between 1982 and four, sorry, it was sent to three cities over 82, 83, and American Masters, eight cities, 1984 to six. Moreover, further shows were sent to Rome, Tokyo, Kumamoto, London, Nuremberg, Dusseldorf, Florence, Paris, Madrid, 
Barcelona, Luxembourg, Munich, Vienna, Berlin, Zurich. The list goes on and on. And it included, exceptionally, cities behind the Iron Curtain, Moscow, Leningrad, Kiev, Novosibirsk, and Budapest, where the great reciprocal loan shows stole a march on the great museums of the West. Heine made a point of attending every opening. When the New York Times critic um, Hilton Kramer reviewed the 1979 Washington inauguration, he quoted, he noted, I quote, in recent years, we have often had the opportunity to host exhibitions of old masters from foreign museums, but the presentation of large collections is rare, end quotes. In fact, there appears to be only one precedent for the thyssen bornemisza traveling exhibitions, and that is the tour of 54 Italian Renaissance paintings from the collection of the five and dime store king, Samuel Cress. Planned to last nine months, this marathon stretched to three years and 25 American cities between 1932 and 1935. It was, however, a national phenomenon. The thyssen bornemisza collection was shown on four continents. Art knows no boundaries, and these exhibitions effectively erased the boundaries between private and public. Thank you. <laughs>